Yeah, I said uh, heading into the game uh, that it was going to be very much a, a do your job uh, type of endeavor uh, in all three phases. We're going to have to come out and play with, you know, play with great urgency, uh, play with great precision, and do it for four quarters. I thought we saw it at times, but uh, you know, across the board, offensive, defense, and special teams, we got to play much, much, much cleaner. You know, like I said, I thought there were a ton of positive things in the run game. I thought we did some things in the pass game. The defense held them to seven. Uh, did a good job with our with our PATs and our in our, in our, uh, in our field goals. But uh, you know, we're gonna. So I'm a English major, English major, not a math guy, but uh, I know you got to get to five before we can get to six. So at the end of the day, pleased with the win, and now we're ready to move forward for Egg Bowl week. Questions? We'll get a mic to you. Uh, we'll start up front with Ben. Joe, Tommy's given you guys a lot in the, in the run game the last few weeks. I, I know some of it's just kind of what the defense is giving him, but. How much has he added and sort of opened things up a little bit with, with what, the way what he's done on the ground? Yeah. It's been a great compliment to Kylan and the other running backs who I think are running very hard, you know, with great pad level and physicality and protecting the football. But heading into the Arkansas game, that was a discussion I had with Tommy that, you know, he, he needs to, as he has for a majority of his career, uh, be a threat with his arm and his legs and not try to pigeonhole himself as a pocket passer and, you know, do the things that have made him successful. And I think we've seen that uh, the past few weeks. Coach, is there an update on, on Tyree Phillips and how do you feel like the team got out of the ball game health-wise? You know, Ty, Tyree went a little bit in the second half and then, uh, you know, we kind of pulled him out as we got some of the reserves in, but uh, we're banked up. Uh, so we'll we'll get in tomorrow morning, kind of look at the injury report and, you know, short turnaround. But uh, I think health-wise from a long-term perspective in the sense that there's only, you know, five days left in the regular season, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're fighting. Coach, you know, you, your three touchdowns in the first half came on consecutive drives. What was the difference between that and the four drives that resulted in three punts and turnover on downs? Uh, I think we, I think we ran the ball very effectively. I think we protected. I think we threw it in the proximity of the receiver, and I think we caught the ball. So I think the difference was probably execution uh, in those uh, three scoring drives compared to the first few. figure out injuries tomorrow, but with uh, Errol and Cam Dantzler wasn't dressed today either. Is there any lingering issue there? No, we, uh, I think, I think, knock on wood, I think they'll both be ready to roll tomorrow. Also, uh, Tommy Champion, Greg Island, Mike Missouri were suspended today. Is that just a one game thing? Or is that yeah, one game. One game. Derek, you're going to be uh, Joe, Monday you said you wouldn't look at Ole Miss till right now after the game. They've had about two weeks to prepare. Yeah, I lied. I looked at them this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much of a disadvantage is that that they're going to have two or four weeks to prepare for you guys on Thursday? Yeah, I mean, I don't make the schedules or I'm not involved in that that decision-making process. So, you know, they have the luxury of, of having a, a bye week and a bunch of days to get ready. And, you know, we're, we're coming off a short week, so it is what it is. We're not going to complain, not going to make excuses. We're going to go in tomorrow, watch this tape real early in the morning, uh, grade it, and then we're going to move on and start our game plan. The uh, 88 yarder to Kylan, it seemed to have yeah. some creativity to it. Did, did you know that it was, it was going to work out that well coming out of the timeout? And how long had you had that in the tank? We called that a couple times this year. Uh, it's best designed against a split safety, too high defense, where you get the mic isolated on the back. Uh, and then you're running a, a, a power sucker at him. And he's responsible for three vertical, and he's also responsible for the C gap. So whatever it is, if he had turned and run with Kyle, then the quarterback would have run the ball. So we got it up one time this year. I think it was against Southern Miss, and it went single high, and we threw it to Kyle. He caught it for a short gainer. But uh, you know, that, that was one, uh, you know, P and 10, possession and 10 off the sideline. It had been all split safety stuff, so that's why we went with it. A couple drives for the offense to kind of get to get warmed up there. What, what were you seeing from the team the first quarter? I was seeing red because I was mad that we weren't executing it at, at a high level. Uh, you know, we, we, there were just some things within that drive. But we, the, you know, we need to play with a little more precision. We moved the ball a little bit between 30s and then stalled out as we got down into the kind of the fringe area, not in the red zone, and had the the other one. So, you know, we just need to block a little better. We needed to, you know, find the guy that was open and throw it to him, and we need to catch it. And I think thought what we did on that fourth drive was we started, you know, playing with a little more tempo, you know, running a little more. I think uh, Tommy hit Dedrick on that, on that pass down in there, 
So uh, I think it was it was more of a matter of execution than anything. Alex talked about the quick turnaround a little bit already. Well, what's the message to the guys in the locker room? Is that what a, a lot what you talked about in the locker room just after the game was? You know, we've got Thanksgiving in five days, and we try to turn this thing around and start thinking about that pretty much right now. Yeah, I talked about you know decision making tonight and being smart, and uh, you know we'll come in tomorrow, and, and the staff will be there. You know, first thing, but they're going to come in for for injury check in and. Uh, you know, we're going to grade the film and have them watch it on their own because we need that time because technically tomorrow is a football Monday and then Monday's a football Tuesday and then kind of so on down the line. So, uh, you know, they, uh, we're going to need to get healthy real quick. Uh, they're going to need to jump start and kind of watch some of the Ole Miss stuff on their own while we're formulating the game plan and we're going to have to dang, hit the ground running on Monday. And I know I'm excited. I know the staff's excited. I know the fans are excited. And I know our players are excited. So, uh, you know, take a little nap tonight, get up, be ready to roll. Joe, I know that got off to a slow start and kind of got it clicking a little bit, but I think you all still haven't gone over 250 yards passing this year. I know you talked about the run game sort of run is sort of the starting point for the offense, but how much do you feel like that's holding you guys back as an offense, just not being able to get the passing game going at least to what you expected to? Yeah, I think as we continue to evolve and the passing game continues to improve, it'll be more representative of what the system has been over the years. And, and it's, I mean, it's been incremental, sometimes slow process. Uh, but. You know, you see flashes of it. I don't think it's for a lack of ability. I think it's for a lack of consistency. And, you know, as, as you continue to, to work with the kids that we have and you continue to recruit, and uh, it, it'll, you know, the pass game will continue to evolve as will the offense. Played a lot of freshmen this year. You got a few more in there tonight. Uh, I know you, you'll see a little bit more on film, but just your thoughts on and guys like Jack Harris and. Uh, some of those guys that got a chance to get in the game and play. Yeah, I think we have an incredibly talented, true freshman class and, and a lot of very good second-year players, too. Uh, you know, you just go by position. You know, Garrett played. Uh, Lee Witherspoon played. Uh, a bunch of the true freshman offensive linemen got in there. Jack Harris, Nathan Pickering actually started the game. Uh, Jarion, Martin Emerson. I mean, you could just I mean, go on down the line. And, uh, you know, I think that you know, I think it's going to bode well for the uh, – for the rest of the season, and certainly bode well for the future when you re recruit that caliber of player and they're able to come in uh, and play immediately and do it at a high level and improve throughout the year. I think that's, I think it's, you know, I'm very excited about the true freshman class. Any other questions? Great, thank you. Uh, players shortly. Hail State.